In this video, we're going to continue to look at expert mode and we're going to focus specifically on FM8's very sophisticated envelopes. We've already looked at the basic principles of FM synthesis, how we can route one operator into another operator to modulate the frequency and thus change the timbre of that operator. And we can modulate the modulators themselves with further modulation. The thing is, when it's just a static sound like that, it's not terribly interesting. What's interesting is hearing the timbre change. And this is where envelopes come in really handy. Each operator has its own special page, and you can view that either by clicking on the operators in the FM matrix, or by clicking on them over here in the navigator. I'm going to click operator E, and you can see that operator's envelope down here at the bottom of the page. By default, when you start with a new sound, all the envelopes are like this, just a simple gate. No attack or decay or release, just the simple sustained note on, note off. You'll hear that it sounds a little bit clicky. That's because at the moment, with no release on our envelope, the note stops immediately when you take your finger off the key, even if the waveform is right in the middle of a cycle. And that produces an unwanted kind of clicking sound. And the solution would be to extend the release time by clicking and dragging this square on the bottom right of our envelope down here, just so there's a bit of a natural decay when we take our finger off the note. But we want to do that for all the operators. So if we click here where it says env, we'll see the envelopes page, and we can edit our operator's envelopes in exactly the same way we can on that operator's page. We can also link envelopes together using these link buttons down the right hand side here. So whichever envelope we happen to be editing, if we click the link button next to another envelope, like D and F, for example, that'll link all those envelopes together. So now, if we extend the release in operator E, we'll see that that's copied in operator F and D. You can zoom in or zoom out by clicking anywhere and just dragging. And if you double click, it'll resize the zoom so you can see the whole envelope in the window. So if you're zoomed in or out too far, just double click. So now we've got a bit of a release on our note. It's still a bit clicky at the start because we want to give it a bit of an attack. And we can have a slow attack or a quick attack. In between any two points on our envelopes is this little dot here, and that determines the shape of the curve. If we want to unlink envelopes at any time, we can just hit the link buttons again and they'll retain their settings, but now I'm free, for example, to change E and it won't affect D or F. Don't forget, in between any two points, we've got our little dot here we can use to change the shape. <laughs> If we think for the time being of a traditional ADSR envelope, attack, decay, sustain, release, then so far we've got attack over here, we've got our release as we looked at over here, and this point on the top right of our envelope determines the level of sustain and the speed of the decay. And again, just like any other two points, the decay curve can be altered using this little red dot. Anything in between these two vertical red lines will loop, unless we turn off this sustain button. 
we turn that off, then it doesn't matter how long we hold down the note for, it'll just play the whole envelope and then end rather than sustaining. And if we turn off this release button, the envelope will play through its sequence even if we're not holding down the note. Of course, F is our carrier, so I'll need to do it on F as well for you to hear that. But if I strike a note now, I'm not holding the note down, I'm taking my finger off, and it's still playing. The vast majority of the time, you're going to want to have both release and sustain turned on. So, so far, as we've discussed, it's like a traditional ADSR envelope, attack, decay, sustain, release. But it's potentially a lot more interesting than that, because if we hold down the control key on our keyboard and click somewhere, it'll add another point. We can do that as many times as we want. Now remember, between any two points, we've got these little red dots which determine the shape of the curve. So remember, anything in between those two red lines loops, it sustains. We can delete points we've added just by clicking them again whilst holding the control key. And we don't just have to add more points in this sustain section, we can add more points before the point at which it loops. Okay, we're going to take a little break now so I can get a cup of tea, but in part two we're going to carry on exactly where we left off, so I'll see you in a bit.